some people say, oh no, you can't let a woman teach. You know, about the only thing I can say about that is, thank God my mother's dead. She went home to be with the Lord because, frankly, she was a born-again Christian on the day she died. And when she was younger, though, and when I was younger, I don't think I would disrespect my mother by saying I couldn't learn from her the things that she had to teach me because, frankly, most of you know that maybe your dad's not there. Maybe he wasn't there in the beginning. Maybe you were like me, a bastard from birth. But that your mother taught you the things that she taught you, whether they be to wash your face, to wash your hands, to, if you're lucky and had a godly mother, you know, to go to church, to study and to learn those things that were needful and you needed to be taught of God through a woman. So somehow, you know, there's been this really adamant, you know, blowback against women rising up, you know, and being able to share the word of God that frankly, you know, when I go to a doctor, you know, I don't look to see if the doctor's a Christian. I look to see if the doctor can do his job. If the doctor can do his job, I'll take him. And if he's an expert in the field, I'll take him. At Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa, when I was there in the early days, it was a big deal for some of the people at Calvary to not let a woman teach. <gasps> no, no, no. But on a Wednesday night Bible study, Chuck did something interesting. We had School of the Bible going on at the time. There were these classes being offered by all these different teachers. Skip was around back then. Rick Boyer was around. Romaine was teaching. Romaine was teaching? <laughs> Romaine was teaching Gifts of the Spirit from Book of Acts. My mother went to it. Uh, Malcolm Wilde was there. Gee, it seems like a lot of people were there. And there was a woman teacher there. She was teaching Matthew from a Jewish perspective. And she was Jewish. Oh my God. And you know, there were people, because I worked in the tape planning library, I would always hear the little going on, that people were upset when they found out. Oh, did you hear about that last Wednesday night? That was the first night and there was a woman teacher there and men sat in. Yeah, but did you hear what she taught? Well, yeah, it was, it was very Jewish. Yeah, but, but she was a woman. Well, was she wrong? No, but, 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 did anybody stop her from teaching? Well, no. Did she ask permission to speak to the men? Well, no. Did they kind of like, you know, agree by going in there to sit down and listen to her that they were participating in learning from someone who might be an expert in Jewish things about Matthew? But she was a woman. So what? Who cares? If God could speak to a jackass, and he did, then God could speak to a man, woman, or a child. Let's see. Eli, high priest, God speaks, tells the people what's going to happen. Okay. Hmm. Now we have Samuel come up and say, uh, did you call me, Ellie? No, 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 no. I didn't. Oh, okay, I'm going back to bed. Did you call me, Ellie? No, 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 no. Well, what's going on now? Why are you asking me if you call me? Because I keep hearing his voice. I'm late. You know, here I am in the tabernacle, you know, I'm kind of laying there, you know, just listening, paying, minding my own attention. And I hear this, Samuel. And it's like, what? And I don't hear nothing else. Ellie says, hmm. I'm the high priest. I communicate the word of God to the people and declare. So, tell you what, Samuel, you're just a little kid, you know, so 
Next time you hear that voice, just say, speak, Lord, your servant listens. So he did. And guess what? Samuel the prophet. Ooh, big deal. But that's Joyce Meyer. I heard stories about her. I've heard rumors. She inspires all those women, you know, to get into like gifts and, you know, changing their attitudes and dealing with, you know, like their, their wrong perspectives, you know, and that, that that's not right. You know, it's got to be a man telling a woman, you know, what to do. Or, wait a minute, maybe we could let women teach women, you know, because we don't know what menstrual cycle's like. We've never felt one. So maybe the women should teach the women, you know. Older women, you teach younger women, you know, so that's okay. But God knows we don't want to have a woman teaching men. Don't let any of the men in there. Ban them at the door. Are you serious? Let's be real for a minute. Are you really that serious? Come meet me. I mean, come, come on. Come, come on. Get real. Dude, don't pull the bull or the wool over someone's eyes just because you have an attitude problem. Get real enough to say, hey, you know what? If it's something good that I need to hear, then God can speak to anything that I need to hear it from because he may want to change you so you understand that he can speak directly to you if you need to have it. I don't know you righteous people that, you know, want to be so pushing away other people that might have heard from God that you don't want to listen. He might back him up. Oh. Well, tell me what she's got to say. We'll see if it fits scripture because I'm just waiting for her to stumble and fall so that I could just stomp on her. After all, who cares if she's saved? She's got some funny ideas. I think the one with the funny ideas isn't her. Starting your day right from Joyce Myers. It's a promise. Let your mercy and loving kindness come also to me, O Lord, even your salvation according to your promise. Some Christians want to make a law out of studying the Bible or spending a certain amount of time with God. But we should be motivated to read God's word and spend time with him because of our love relationship with him, not because of a commandment to do so. Jesus said, if you really love me, you will keep or obey my commandments. 1 John 14:15. What he really meant was, if you love me and walk in fellowship with me, you will keep my commandments automatically. If you concentrate on loving God, then keeping his commandments will become a natural part of what you do. It's a promise he makes to you. You see, it's so simple to make it your way, your will, your righteousness, your works, your accomplishments, and your way of thinking. But God doesn't like that. He likes to say, you know, trust me and don't lean in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me and I'll direct your path and I'll choose to accomplish in you. And it may be the hard way by making you, you know, trip, stumble, fall, slip, slide, follow and find up yourself finally down the road, you know, that you wound up getting there by stumbling and bumbling and, you know, kind of grumbling and getting nailed and knocked down and then dragged off, you know, and finally getting to the place where I wanted you to be, where you could have just walked there in the spirit simply by obeying me but instead you had to go a long way around through the desert through the wilderness through the waters through everything else fire flood you know snakes biting you scorpions stinging you food being provided for you man in the wilderness and finally you get into the promised land where you could have went direct could have done it the easy way so what do you think? Do you think it's so hard to understand that we can't relate to Jesus on a personal level by his promise? That he isn't telling us to obey him by directing us to say, 
do it, but that because we love him, we choose to observe and see that there's a benefit to doing what God says because he's got the easy way in mind for us. So I think today, if you really want to do it the hard way, go on the internet. You can pick and choose your God. Just go to www.pickgod any way I want it. Dot com. And the reality is, that's what you'll become. Any God, any way, any will that you want. But if you choose today to follow the Lord and to accept him speaking to you today, just because it fits, and I think you'll find that God has a plan for you. And that he's making you pretty smart. Even if I do say so from a woman's perspective that Joyce Myers might have given, that maybe I just related to you because I'm a man. Oh, you mean I can accept that it's from Joyce Myers now because a man related it to me? But he's a Jesus freak. He's one of those Jesus gypsies. He's kind of weird. <laughs> no, I'm just a jackass speaking God's word.